How's it going guys? Hellstone here again and today we have another reaction video. I'm very excited about it. Today we are going to be learning a little bit more about what it is the Queen's Guard actually does. Now a lot of people, I should say a lot of foreigners of the United Kingdom, don't really understand the full purpose of the Queen's Guard. Um, I think a lot of people look at them more as a tourist attraction. Uh, I think that's pretty, pretty messed up myself personally. Uh, myself being a soldier I can understand that um, the work we do is very serious, um, and very important. And even though I am an American, I respect grateful, greatly, uh, what it is the Queen's Guard actually does, that being the role of a real actual soldier. And a lot of people I feel don't understand that. And so hopefully by me watching this video today, I can, me watching this, uh, English is hard. <laughs> Hopefully by me watching this video today, I can learn a little bit more about what it is these guys actually do. So I'm excited. Without any further ado, let's hop right into things. Queen Elizabeth II is the longest serving British monarch and is the current longest serving monarch in the world. Since she took the throne in 1952, much has changed in the UK. You could say the British people are not on the whole as enamored with the royal family as they were when she took the throne. But despite polls in 2018 revealing that two thirds of the British public were not interested in the royal wedding, it seems for the most part people are not interested in getting rid of their royals. We can only find one instance when someone planned to take out the Queen. And that was only revealed years later when declassified spy papers told us a New Zealand teenager had planned to do just that in 1981. So what do the Queen's Guard do with themselves all day? Welcome to this episode of the Infographic Show. What does the Queen's Guard actually do? If you saw our show titled How Much Protection Does the Royal Family Get, you'll know that the Royal Family has around the clock protection, and that comes in many forms. We're not just talking about the main royals that we all know, but the many other members of this family. The Queen might be supported by her guards, but you have other outfits such as Scotland Yard's Royalty and Specialist Protection Service, also offering armed protection when she's at home and when she goes on the road. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. And I think every time I talk, I always say I'm going to take these headphones off so I can actually hear myself. That is pretty interesting. I didn't actually know that there were different category i don't know if it's a different category but different services armed protection that the queen and i guess the rest of the royal family has now i myself personally don't know much about the royal family outside of the main family i guess i guess i should say that core um and i guess they're saying in this video that they're extended family and i guess that only makes sense and maybe i'll watch another video explaining that a bit more but that's pretty interesting to me i wonder how how many people are considered Royals, or I guess how far it goes, that's pretty interesting. While it seems the royals don't have many enemies, who knows if someone is willing to spend years in prison for their five minutes of fame. That's why when you see her driving down the street, she'll be surrounded by an armed and very skilled special escort group. So with this in mind, does she really need a Queen's Guard? First of all, you all likely know who we're talking about when we say the Queen's Guard, since you've all seen pictures of these men that wear those large furry hats and dress in red and black. These people are not just for show, however. It's pretty interesting. Uh, the history behind the bear pelt hats um, it, and it goes into different countries as well but it's, it goes into height and having the enemy shoot at you and it's pretty interesting stuff i'm not going to get into it now but i really like the black hats the bear pelt hats those are pretty awesome and they fill a role in protecting the queen the guard is made up of infantry and cavalry soldiers and they work in what's called the household division that means you'll find them doing their duty at buckingham palace st james palace windsor castle and some other places one source tells us that the queen spends most of her time at buckingham palace although she goes to windsor castle on most weekends visits balmoral castle in scotland for long periods of time and for christmas often visits sandringham house in norfolk we're told that the queen's guard is mainly split in into two parts, and those two parts will be posted either at Buckingham Palace or St. James Palace. When the Queen is staying at Buckingham Palace, there are usually three officers working there as well as 40 other ranks. There will also be four sentries at the palace. They work night and day, sometimes staying in one spot, while others will walk around the grounds. The foot guards might be part of the Grenadier Guards, the Scots Guards, the Irish Guards, the Welsh Guards, or the Coldstream Guards. If you visit Buckingham Palace at the right time, you might actually see the changing of the guard. Okay, so now okay, we should... So that 
changing of the guard. I've definitely seen a couple of videos where they do that. I think it's really impressive. Um, the British are definitely known for their precision and how they march and how they do their movements. Um, us Americans, uh, as much as I wish it were different, in our marching, we tend to, generally speaking, I should emphasize, generally speaking, we're a little less uniform, so to speak, than the British are. Um, and I can only think of a couple situations where we're going to be as precise as them here in America. And that's probably in our Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Those guys are absolutely excellent in their marching. Um, Silent Drill Platoon, um, maybe the President Sentinels in the White House. But other than that, we don't do as... As precise stuff. If you haven't seen videos of the changing of the guard, definitely go watch that. It's pretty interesting stuff. Ask if these guys ever have any trouble. In the past, the guards did have a few run-ins with a disgruntled public, but for the most part in modern times, they haven't really been tested. Perhaps the biggest case in some blushes for the guards was when a man called Michael Fagan managed to get past them in 1982 and, believe it or not, get into the Queen's bedroom. This was a huge thing back in the day. Imagine, I wonder if they got fired for that. Some sources, maybe not that reliable, say that Fagan only did it because he had been in the pub with his friends and he had bet them five pounds that he could get into the Queen's bedroom. He managed to scale a wall, climb up a drain pipe, and then it's said by sheer luck he ended up on the balcony outside the right bedroom. There are after all many bedrooms in Buckingham Palace. Stories differ as to what happened next, with some reports saying the Queen was startled and Fagan said to her, relax sister, you don't have to worry, I'm Irish. We doubt the veracity of the source though. Other reports say he just left the room and was subsequently apprehended by police, who probably should have been on the scene sooner. He was not charged for trespassing, but for stealing some royal wine. In the end, he was sent to a psychiatric hospital. After hearing this, you might be wondering when the Queen's Guard were, but the Queen's Guards were already beaten as they remained outside the palace. The fault was theirs, but also the police officer that was supposed to be guarding the room. The sentry job sounds kind of boring, as they just stand there for long periods of time. We are told that they have the order, you may not eat, sleep, smoke, stand easy, sit or lie down during your tour of duty. In a two hour period every 10 minutes, they will pace back and forth where they are stationed. This can be amusing for tourists as the sentries look so serious. Tourists in the past have gotten in the way of the sentry, and if that happened, he would shout, make way for the Queen's Guard. He might I've seen videos of that where tourists get in the way, and this is going back to the start of the video, it bothers me a lot because I don't think people understand the seriousness of a soldier's job and how serious we take our jobs. And so, I don't know, it kind of annoys me actually when I see when I see tourists kind of mess around with the Queen's guards and poke fun at them. And I don't know, it bothers me a little bit. Also shout, stand back from the Queen's guard. And if that isn't heated, then he's forced to point his rifle at you. Unfortunately, some members of the public, mostly tourists, still get in these guards' way. And so their posts have largely been removed from where they could be interfered with. In an interview, one guard said that being tormented by tourists was starting to take its toll, and he was glad their posts were now in a place where the public couldn't get too close. He told Stars and Stripes in the US, it's about time. We've had enough of that lot, they'd stick pins in you, some of them. Another guard said that it was fine that people wanted photos and even got up close, but he said some tourists would throw banana skins in their path, while others would stick- disrespect of that is ridiculous stick oranges in their bayonets or pull their bearskin busby hats. That same guard said this, which doesn't sound all that bad. Women sometimes wanted to come up and try to hold hands. Lots of women slip things into our pocket when we're wearing greatcoats. Things like addresses and telephone numbers. The Australian media said in 2018, people must be aware that while guards may seem unshakable, if someone really does something to annoy them or become too much of a nuisance, they will react. Still, one guardsman said most of the time their weapons are not loaded. You only carry live rounds if there's a high threat level that someone will attack, he said. That's pretty interesting, and I wonder why. I mean, I don't know. That, that is interesting to me that you wouldn't carry live rounds, especially if it's an actual posting that you have. But I don't know. Maybe they'll explain it. But I've never carried any. According to him, they must look serious at all times. If they're caught laughing or even chatting with a tourist, he said they're liable to be fined around $355. You're allowed to get them away by shouting warnings at them, the guard said. If they fail to move or start to act aggressively, we present our bayonets to remind them that we can do more harm than them. Another thing is, all that standing can be hard work, and some guards have been known to pass out. 
If they think they're going to faint, it's said that they have to do that in a disciplined way. It's called a faint to attention. You have to faint to attention, a Major Di Bevan of the Welsh Guards told the Times newspaper. It will probably involve a broken nose and a whole lot of missing teeth. You can find photos online of what it looks like. But it seems that they also have some fun. An article in BuzzFeed which took the information from former guards tells us that they would give each other funny or sometimes insulting nicknames. They would act around, too. With one guard trying to say if they got the chance to sit on the throne, they would do it and take a selfie. If you get a chance to sit on the throne of England, you aren't going to pass it up, he said. Okay, I love that. A soldier is a soldier no matter where you are in the world because, I don't know, a lot of times if you're a civilian or you're looking from the outside in, we can seem very serious and very, I don't know, like soldiers, and that's a good thing. But at the end of the day, we're still people, and we mess around a lot, and it's always good fun. Dead. Other documents say some guards would allow their friends to park in St. James Palace, while another document said some guards would sneak the lady friends of Prince Andrew into the palace. So while they might look like inhumans to the tourist, they are certainly not unlike any of the rest of us. In a Reddit Q&A, a guard talked about many aspects of his work, saying if you want to be one of them, you must pass a few tests and also have the smarts about you. He said that it helps to be tall. He said that while much of what they do is ceremonial, they are also security. He just added that if things do turn awry, police are usually there as a backup. Asked if he ever had spoken to the Queen, he replied, yeah, when I was at guard on Windsor Castle, she came up to me with her husband and the dogs and asked me some questions. She's really nice. He seemed to like his job, saying only occasionally people would try and annoy him. Although he did say on any given day about 200 tourists would try and make him laugh. He also said the job gets tiresome, so you have to amuse yourself. When I'm really bored, I like to mess people's pictures up. When a load of Asian tourists came and set up a huge picture, I waited until the cameraman was counting down to take the pic, and then marched up and down my post until they all left. He also said that sometimes, perhaps the most embarrassing times, is when a guard needs to urinate but has nowhere to go. He said occasionally you'll see a puddle underneath the guard's feet. If anything were to happen to the Queen, it's good to know that she's got her loyal guard to turn to for help. And if you've got a terrible website, or just need help building okay. a great- Yeah, I think we're at the end of the video. Alright, so let's just talk about this briefly. I really enjoyed that video. Um, like I said, I, I, I don't know, I appreciate the Royal Guards and what they do. Um, I can definitely appreciate the dedication they have to fulfilling their duty. Um, again, it, I don't know, it just bothers me, the idea of somebody messing, especially a tourist who's like, I don't know, it seems disrespectful to me to, to go into somebody else's country and, and do that, but hey, that's just me. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to, feel free to check out some of the other videos I have on my channel. I do a lot of military reaction videos, history reaction videos, as well as backpacking, camping, outdoors type stuff. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.